Hello everybody, welcome back to Liz Labs. Today I'm going to be a little contrary and try to convince you that maybe it's a good idea to take Pack Mule instead of investing in pockets. Times have changed. The zombie apocalypse is here. Do we run? Do we hide? Or do we adapt and build? Do we survive? Alright, now, you might be kind of confused because... You're probably thinking, why on earth would I invest points into something that I can get for free with items later on? And I can't really contradict that at all because honestly, that's how I play my character. Um, I always look for the pockets and that's how I get my stuff maxed out. But it does occur to me after looking at what it takes that maybe I've been playing it wrong. Maybe, just maybe. So I'm going to put this information out for you guys to let you make an informed decision. And then let me know what you think. All right, first off, what is Pack Mule? For those who are new players, what is Pack Mule? Pack Mule is the, you're a Pack Mule and you can carry more items in your inventory without suffering movement penalties. Basically, you can max this out and not only... Will all of your backpack open up? These things will be open. It will also not affect your mobility, which means you're not going to get as tired when you're running. You'll be able to get away from the zombies faster. If you are someone who enjoys looting a lot, especially early game, when you're having to pick everything up in the game, I mean everything because you don't have a stockpile yet, um, it could be an idea for an early game uh, change. You know what I'm saying? And here is why. If we go look at the tree itself, pack mule. In order to get pack mule, what does it require of me to get all of it? Just out of curiosity, what does it take, take for me to get all of pack mule and be completely unencumbered through my entire game? Well, let's see. We could buy it with one point on day one, basically. Um, then we've got strength of level two. Not bad. Strength of level three. Eh. Strength of level four. Not bad. Uh, strength of level 5. So, we don't have to max out strength in order to get the top tier pack mule. I'm not sure why I always thought you had to max it out. Just about everything else in order to get the top tier, you have to max it out. There's a couple of exceptions. Um, uh, Charismatic Nature, you don't have to max it out. Uh, Daring Adventurer, you don't have to... Uh, that was pretty close. Agility level 8. 7. 7. 7. Is 7, is that more than one point? Yes, it is. Okay, so that's probably one of the few is living off the land. Could be one of the cheapest ones out there to max out, really. Okay, so out of these, the living off the land takes the fortitude of five, and the pack mule takes the strength of five. Those are the only two that you can top tier it at level five, which is right before things start getting a little hairy trying to invest points into it. At tier six, you start having to invest two or even three points in order to upgrade. At tier five, it's right before you're getting to that um, extra investment that you're having to do. So, quite literally, the top tier of pack mule takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points. Why did I actually click on those? I didn't mean to click on those. Nine points in order to get the top tier, and then you have it for the rest of the game. Alright, and then you have it for the rest of the game. Um, you could technically do that in your first week of play, basically. Nine points, and you're top tier, you've got all of your inventory, you don't have to worry about it anymore. And if you're a pack mule, a literal pack mule, or a pack rat in my case, if you're wanting to take all of the stuff and things home, sacrificing nine levels to make sure that you are not ever encumbered again in your game. No matter what armor you choose. And here's why I say what armor you choose, because... Whenever you start out the game, there are very few things that you can do to lighten your load. When you first start out, you can get jackets and t-shirts and pants. And you can, from day one, make a clothing pocket mod. So if we go to pocket, 
What does it take to make? It takes leather, duct tape, cloth fragment, and sewing kits. Sewing kits are a little hard to come by, so they're a little tedious to make. But it can be done first week of uh, play. So you're going to be able to displace one, two, three pockets. That's it. Three of the 18. So I'll have 15 slots I still can't use. Um, there is a double pocket mod out there, but you have to get a specific book. It's what? Sewing kit number seven. Needle and thread. Yeah, number seven. The double pocket. Um, I've played a couple of playthroughs and I still haven't found this book. You could get lucky and find it really, really early. Who knows? So if you wanted to do the double pockets, that takes leather, duct tape, uh, basically all of the same things, just more of them. So, not hugely expensive to make, but you have to find a book first. And those displace six items. So, you still have 11 item, 11, 11 slots you can't use. So, in order to get to where you're not encumbered at all, you would also have to put it into your armor. Now, that's fine, except that, hear me out. We have loot stages, and only at certain loot stages are you going to find these particular mods. And I've played a lot of games, and I've hard, had a hard time finding the mods. So, how many of these guys is it going to take for me to actually make it to where I'm not encumbered in my game anymore? And uh, let's find out. Say, we only have these pockets. That displaces three of them here. Let me shove these guys aside right here. Uh, actually, let me pour into a box right quick. Because it's actually taking up spots. Okay. Say we have these three right here taking these spots right here. Well, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's E. No, six. Fifteen? Fifteen more spots. So it would take. What are these? Three? We need five of these in order to take it up. So one. One, two, three. Another one. One, two, three, another one. One, two, three. And it would take me putting a triple pocket mod into each one of my pieces of armor to make it to where I'm not encumbered with regular pockets. I would have to have a triple pocket mod. Not one of the other pockets, a triple, which is top tier loot. Uh, it used to be you could go in the game and just randomly find triple pocket mods, possibly, even in the trader stock and things like that, but it's really hard to come by those nowadays, early game. Um, obviously, the longer you play, the more likely these things are going to be happening, but how many hours do you have to invest in playing your character before you reach the loot level that these guys are going to show up? A good bit of time. And during that time, you're running your loot wares back and forth, you're dropping things that you might want to sell because you just simply can't carry it. Um, or you could just simply be over encumbered and you're still going through a place. So you're dropping things that you might be able to use, but you're like, I, I just can't really be over encumbered. I might get, you know, covered. Okay. So, uh, say you got lucky and you found the book to make these. So uh, me, flip this so it's at the end right here one two one two one two and we still have 12 more spots that we need to fill three six nine twelve i would have to have four triple pocket mods i would be able to take a triple pocket mod out of one of my pieces of armor to be totally unencumbered that's a lot of pockets and that's two books Actually, the triple pocket mod, you have to have the schematic. You can't open it through your skill tree. You have to find the schematic for it. It takes scrap polymers, leather, duct tape, mechanical parts, sewing kit. Pretty easy to make. Uh, you can scavenge all those things. Pretty easy. It doesn't take, like, steel, so you also have to have a crucible or some BS like that. So it's affordable. The problem is, is finding the schematic for it or finding the mod itself. Do you see my problem? All of these being able to walk around unencumbered have to do with the possibility of finding a book, finding a schematic, being able to make it, 
And all of those take time in the game in order to do them. Because you have to reach a certain, okay, a certain level before you're going to start seeing that kind of loot. Even the schematics nowadays have a loot level. Uh, the books have a loot level so that you are only going to find those once you reach a certain game stage. What exactly those game stages are, I'm not really sure which one the triple pocket mod or the schematic to make it fall into. Or the sewing book number seven. I'm not sure which one that one falls into. I'm sure there are people who know where the XML files are for some of those, but I don't. But I can tell you from experience that I haven't found but a double pocket mod in most of my playthroughs. And some of my playthroughs, I haven't found any pocket mods at all. And still don't have the ability to actually build them because I don't have the schematics. So, thinking on that, the way that the loot table works now, if I were to, say, invest in, say if I were to get crazy and not really care that much about my points, for just a little while, just five measly little points. Is there a reason to buy Pack Mule? Would I be wasting my points to get myself, even if I'm not a strength character, at level five strength? What else does that get me? Is it worth even investing the five points into strength? Well, let's find out. As a non-strength character, you probably wouldn't be using a shotgun, but you could make quality four shotguns. You're already finding shotgun parts, Say you get the ability to make a shotgun because you do a tier one. Uh, say you want to invest in taking all of those parts and selling them. You want to be a crafter slash seller. Uh, shotguns actually worth a lot of money, especially at tier four. Uh, Pummel Pete, at your tier five of your strength, you are now doing, let's see, lots and lots of damage. You can crash craft your quality four, which is basically your top tier on that one as well that you can craft. You can craft a tier five, but a tier four is like when you start seeing the good numbers on the, the selling of it. Um, plus, we also have Skull Crusher, which you can do quality four sledgehammers and a whole lot of damage. Sexy T-Rex. Who does not like them some sexy T-Rex as it is on strength level four? You're doing a uh, stam tool on... <clears throat> It reduces melee and tool stamina usage by 20% and power attacks by 40%. Killing blows grant 20% stamina. Sexy T-Rex is one of those that goes basically no matter what you're using, as long as it's melee or tool or whatever. Sexy T-Rex helps with that. And if you do a killing blow with one of your melee weapons and you're doing a 20% stamina regen on it because you did a killing blow... That greatly increases your chance of actually surviving. So regardless to whether or not I wanted to put five points into strength to go for pack mule, five points into just sexy T-Rex affords me at least some stamina regen whenever I do a killing blow. Uh, heavy armor, you would get quality four good armor. Uh, improves the durability by 150 and reduces the heavy armor and stamina penalties by 17%. That's pretty good, because the heavy armor does make it very, very hard to move. Uh, let me see. The mobility is six. Negative six, right? Yeah, so it basically gives you the mobility back that you would have lost on two of these armor bits plus more. So, not bad. Not bad. Uh, then, of course, we've got Pack Mule, and then we've got Master Chef. Say if I had a five strength, what would that get me in Master Chef? Um, well, basically, you get the sham chowder, the hobo, the chili dogs, the fish tacos, and you cook 30% 30% faster, and you do the yuca juice and the beer. Well, I don't know about you, but those are some of the better earlier meals. I mean, these, the, the gumbo stew, the shepherd's pie, and all that take a lot of cans and a lot of different stuff. This one is basically some of the basic foods. Like, they take one can and meat and stuff like that, and you can cook them. The army cook takes, like, two different types of cans and maybe some other things. So, short order cook is a good one to stop on if you're not really wanting to max it out. And that's a strength of level 5. Minor 69er at strength of level 5. That's a level 3. Level 5 is the second to last one. 
you're crafting your level five tools. Who doesn't like a level five tool? A lot of people do. Um, not only are they good syllables, but those are also the best ones that you can make personally. You can't make a tier six. You can only find a tier six. So that goes for your pickaxes, your hammers, your um, augers, your chainsaws. They would be tier five. If you are in any way interested in any of those tools, getting this up to a tier five is a good idea. Uh, not to mention, you do a whole lot more block damage. Let's let's just be honest. Lots of block damage is good. Uh, then let's see. Strength of tier five is the gold mine. You're going to need an Irish baby buggy to carry all of this ore. Harvest 80% more ore from all sources. Basically 80% from everything that you are picking up. Uh, trees, terrain, stone, whatever you're going after, 80% more. That's pretty damn good. So, after going through all of these things, tier 5 in strength. Is it worth being a tier 5 in strength? Yeah, it's only 5 points. After you get past level 5, you start having to invest in 2 points per perk. So at tier 6, it's going to cost me 2 more points in order to get tier 6. I can see getting to tier 5. Tier 6 would be based on whether or not I wanted to specialize in strength. But not tier 5. So now I'm sitting here asking myself, questioning myself, because I've been telling people for ages, do not take pack mule. You can do it without the points. But I'm sitting here thinking, with the way that the loot works nowadays, how likely is it that during an entire playthrough, I will be able to open up all of this? Guys, I've kind of convinced myself, and I don't even like that I convinced myself that I should invest in those points. Because I like to pick things up. I like to collect things in most of my playthroughs. The Vagabond series where I move a lot and stuff, this would probably help me in getting things moved over because it would mean I could jump off my bike or wherever and not have to worry about being encumbered in case I got Horde coming at me or whatever else. I could basically jump from my bike and do what I need to do and then get going again. Um, now, of course, that character's not a pack rat, but still, whenever I leave a mission... I want to pick up as much stuff as I can because whatever I can't use, I sell. And I sell a lot of stuff. And whenever I have to drop things that I wish to sell, I'm very unhappy about it. But at the same time, if you're going through a large POI, like, um, this one should come out after I've done Dishong. But anyway, I've, I've gone through Dishong Tower and I had to throw out so much loot because I wanted to get all the way to the top without being encumbered. And while I did fill up my bike and fill up Lydia, I still ran out of room. So here's the question. With five points into strength, before you even seriously get into strength, tier six is where you get serious about strength because you're investing multiple points into that one tier. At tier five, you're getting all of your upper gear loot that you can make, at least till tier four, except that you, are, you can make your tier fives tools um you're harvesting more you're doing more damage on all of them you're making the better foods so getting up to tier five on strength not a bad idea just in general even if you didn't plan on taking pack mule i would probably still get to tier five mostly because of sexy t-rex so if i'm going to put all of those points into strength already it's not a waste i'm gonna say it's worth those five points but is it worth five more points putting it into pack mule I don't know. Because when I sit here and look at it, I was just sitting here looking at these things earlier whenever I was thinking about doing this and being contrary and, and joking and stuff like that. After I started really looking at the numbers, I actually started to wonder why haven't I been doing this? Because let, let's, let's just do this. How about we take a look at all of these mods I'm missing out on putting in each one of my armors because I'm having to put a pocket in each one of them. Because that's what it would take. It would take these and putting a pocket into each one of them. I would have to give up one of these. Now, these two right here, they're the same ones. You can't use those. Uh, we've got those and these. These are all the same ones. 
And some of these are specialized. Like, uh, these go into boots. This goes into your helmet. That goes into your chest or legs. This goes into your helmet. Now, if I were to say I wanted to max out my armors, how many slots is that? And this is tier 6 armor. One, two, three, four. I only get four slots to put things into. Four. So I would have to choose, okay, these three, obviously, because these give me my armor. Hold on. Uh, let's do it like that, because these are the better ones. The plus two, the plus 0 0.05, and the negative eight, basically the noise, the stamina, and the banded armor for the extra resist. Okay, so say I wanted to do those three, then I would have to pick just one of these that can go in anything. If I wanted one of each of these in all of this, because, I mean, let, let's just be honest, it just extra armor rating, good idea. Extra stamina, good idea. Uh, extra muffled, if you're wearing steel, you probably don't even need to worry about that because you're going to wake up the dead anyway. But if you were playing, say, Feral Sense on, every little bit's probably going to help you stop dying often. So having something that reduces how much noise you're making, good idea. So I still have to choose one of these things that can go into any of my stuff. Just one. Okay, boots, that would get this one. And it can't go into any others, that's fine. Uh, legs, I would probably put a bandolier and these three. So that's actually four right there. So that would be the legs. Uh, feet, legs, chest, I would probably put in, depending on the environment I'm in, I would love to have an insulated liner, liner or cooling mesh mod because the stamina does get affected and so does your food and water whenever you're in um, extreme temperatures. It really, really does. Okay, and then we've got our steel gloves and our steel helmet. Helmet, it would just be nice if I could put this in there and this. So this and that. Which means I have to take one of these out. <sighs> I wouldn't want to take one of those out if I don't have to. I mean, basically, this is replacing one of those. If I was doing, say, my helmet, I've got four slots. This one, this one, this one, and I would have to pick one of these. Uh, heavy armor, I would probably pick that one. That would be my loadout on there. If I was doing these, I would probably... That one doesn't have a specialized one. So you could basically put whatever you wanted to on there. Specialized one. This could go on the head or... Ch Hold on. I'm not sure why I'm doing it this way. I don't have all of... I don't have multiples of these mods, so it's not really going to work this way. But um, this one could go on this one or this one. At least uh, installed in chest or leg. So then that just gives me three more slots for that one. Basically, I would have to make a compromise between mods if I wanted to make sure I had all of the slots open. I mean, the compromise is fine. How, uh, how late game do you have to be before you're going to have tier 6 on all of your armor so you can actually max out all of the stuff? Plus, you also have to have all of the pockets in order for it to work anyway. You have to basically wait until later game. Okay, say you start out with cloth armor, you get all tier 6 cloth armor. Well, then you're going to have all of the pockets, but first off, you don't have the pockets, because if you're still in cloth, chances are you're early level, you're not going to find those in your in your loot. Um, you'd be lucky to find one or two, maybe the schematic if you're lucky. That's the thing, you have to be lucky to find the schematic, otherwise you're just hoping to find one of the pockets. So... And then, even if you find the pockets, you're having to sacrifice your mobility, your stamina, your quietness to accommodate putting more things in your pocket. Guys, I think I just convinced myself that I should be investing points into it. I mean, if I'm going to go ahead and drop five points into it just for sexy T-Rex and mining, which I would do anyway on any server I play on, um, because you have to go mining first off. And the more you get back, the less you have to mine. It just seems like good common sense. So I would probably max those out anyway. So I would be up to tier 5 in my strength anyway. So at most, I'm sacrificing 5 points to make sure I'm never encumbered for the rest of the game. 
Hmm. Guys, I can't believe I said that. Anyway, guys, this was just kind of a rant. I don't even know where all of this came from, and it's probably not the most entertaining content. But if you agree or disagree, let me know down there in the comment section, because I would like to hear your theories about all of this. Mainly having to do with loot stage and the luck of the draw, basically, on whether or not you'll ever at any point be able to go unencumbered unless you invest the points. And now, of course, if you sacrifice hours and hours and hours and hours on a server, you will eventually get to the point to where you don't have to worry about it. But on a single player playthrough, earlier game just would be so much easier if I didn't have to worry about being encumbered. Anyway, that was just a thought. I'll see you next time. You have a wonderful day, one for that, and you stay shiny. Bye!